This is an 18th century wimple and you find it in a lot of the Favre paintings. Um, what is good is the fact that I have white hair because in the 18th century my hair would have been powdered. It would obviously have been much longer. But um, what, is, um, what one notices in Favre's paintings is that originally the wimple starts out very far out in the front, really worn very far. Like, like this, and also tied under the chin. Um, and normally with a red skull cap underneath. And then as fashion develops, uh, particularly, uh, interestingly, the fashion of Madame Pompadour and, and her hairstyles, the wimple moves, the skull cap is, um, does not appear any longer, and the wimple moves further and further and further and further back until it is actually pinned to the, to the bottom of this big uh, kind of hair construction. Um, what is important is that these, this part, the two lappets, are always shown. They are always worn in the front like this. So we always talk of a faldetta and a nonnella and all this. Um, I'm going to try and describe it to you. So on the one hand, you had, a, uh, you had a, a rectangular piece of cloth. On the one hand, you've got it all gathered on this side. And on the other hand, it is, um, it is straight. You have whalebone all across to keep it stiff and a piece of cardboard, very stiff cardboard inside to give it this shape. You keep four fingers of one hand um, in a loop, which is specially made, and you keep the little finger on the other side to hold it. And you hold it like this in order not to really show your hands. And you are supposed to um, angle it in such a way that will enhance your face. Um, it creates a frame, but it also creates a, a, an element of enhancement and also coquettishness according to the angle at which you wore it. What is interesting is the way that, you know, this lady, for example, is showing off her petticoat, the lace at the cuffs. These are all very important. Um, they were signs that um, even people from less uh, affluent classes wanted to show off. They wanted to show what they had. So she has a little reticule. She's got um, lace at her sleeves. She's got um, a very decorated bodice, um, a lace petticoat underneath. Um, and it is interesting to see how this originates. And thanks to the paintings, we can see that, for example, in the 19th century, um, women wore a black skirt over their dresses. So probably they wore it for outside also because it was so dirty. Um, and then they would take off those, the, they would take off that, that kind of black, black skirt when they arrived in the houses in order to um, show off their dresses. I had just finished my university studies. I had just graduated in uh, history of art. And uh, I was approached by one of my lecturers back then Dr. Vicky Cremona and now Professor Vicky and Cremona and she asked me if I would be interested in working in this project about this upcoming exhibition on costume and it was so exciting you know it was something I had never done before and I thought it was a fantastic opportunity so I went in for it heart and soul. I was organizing the, the workshop I was kind of overseeing all the different tasks in the in the workshop so there was a group dedicated to mannequin making there was a group dedicated to preventive conservation and also how to exhibit the, the clothing um, I was also doing a lot of cataloging and then once all the items were identified um, uh, uh, the exhibition catalog was written a book was put together a catalog a lot went into it 
Photographs were taken, articles were asked for by a variety of people. Vanni Bonello and some of his friends put together a kind of list of expressions which you're going to find if you're doing research. You know, is it called a nonnella, is it a gonnella, is it a chulana? And he found all the different um, words which were used uh, for various bits, pieces of, of, um, of clothing. Sometimes, I mean these are words that sometimes most of us had never heard of, but there it was and it was interpreted. And there were a number of people helping here. And that list is real, it's, it's a wonderful record, it was new knowledge. I wanted the catalogue to be a catalogue which would actually um, really um, record the importance of these costumes. And we looked at different catalogues. Um, we looked at Italian, French, um, but I found that the, the, most, um, the most interesting presentation was that of the Victoria and Albert Museum. We decided that that was going to be our, uh, our baseline in the sense we were going to think not quite model on, on it, but, you know, use it as a baseline for the kind of information we wanted to figure in the catalogue. And uh, um, Evelyn and I started researching very thoroughly. Um, Nicholas lent us a whole collection of books. Um, other people lent us books. We bought some. Um, we went to the library and borrowed others. And we had a, a kind of a library at the patrimonial offices, which we occupied every uh, Thursday evening after people had gone home, every Friday afternoon after people had gone home, all Saturday and all Sunday. And uh, we used to work for six months. We just read, researched and worked. And what was interesting was the whole process, because we were not only reading up, but we were looking a lot. We were looking at pictures, comparing picture paintings to to the the dresses we we had. We were look. We were also looking inside the dresses to see what kind of seams were there, uh, what's so special about them, uh, how are they kept together, and. Um, and we realised, for example, uh, this was also something that had been pointed out by the two specialists uh, who had come to Malta, that a lot of the 18th century dresses had been modified because of the, of the tradition of dancing the Maltia um, at, at, in front of the governor uh, on the 8th of September. So we started looking, we did a lot of, of, of research and we started uh, describing the fabric, describing the, the seams, describing things that, that are important. It's not enough to say this is a nice dress which has a yellow brocade and uh, a bit of blue in it. It is important to say what uh, it is made of, how it is made, why it is important, etc. This is part of our heritage. This, for example, is a very rare um, weave. It is, it is called um, Talmitlem Buba because it requires a lot of, it, it's different colours interwoven, um, which is made from the cotton woven from uh, uh, Maltese cotton. And they used to wear it as a special, on special occasions. And we, we found one. So, um, just to give you an example of the kind of description, for example, for the dress that we discovered at the Gozo Museum. So it's lady, ladies dinner dress, circa 1880. The dress is composed of a jacket and skirt in greenish grey and purple canelle silk, trimmed with yellow and black machine lace. The front buttons are missing. The lining of the jacket is unbleached cotton twill. That of the skirt is in cotton gauze. The main decorative feature of the dress are the pleated frills down the front panel, spreading onto the hemline and train, and edging the back skirt, as well as the wrists. The original tight-fitting bodice was subsequently let out at the seams. The dress was probably worn over a stiffened corset 
and a tournure, a back, a back support of hair frills, um, which would have supported the back overskirt. Only one point of the back overskirt is still stitched to the lining to create a drapery effect. The other stitching has been cut or come undone. The waistband is labelled as follows in golden thread. G. Morana, Mod Robe Manto, Malta. Interesting that we are going to be able to do this tour تبدا ترى مين يستاجب قدام لبساش ينترسى هدراب مين اش ينترسى هالهياتا مين يستاجب كم كنو زار النيس مين يبدا يدلك او مي ما ينكيكو كيف هاد السوبر تبدا كيل الويست لاين داس اكزاير محفوظ بالكورسيت ام او برزنت بيوتفال يستاجب وين افلي كلش كيما مول بلدين ام بات برزنت بي كلو كلارتيستي الارتيستي اللي يفشنو الباترن تاع دراب ام كنا بالسكشن تال بيسي تال تاتيج يو تال مامودية والسيت ابس كانت اجينا ليا كانت انترسانتي عشان كان برزنت بالبتسلا انسيت انسان بالبتسلا اللي تفور ما بارت امبورتانت من الكولتورة تانا و كم زينت و بال امبلشمنت كم تات كم كانت بارت امبورتانتي و ما ننسو شو كل اتشسوري و بال امري واهي الوكينج ستيكس و ما تستاش تسمي حاجة و تنسى الأخرى، عشان أنت باش تلبس كوستوم، قال كان ما هنا في ديد الإكسبيشن ما كانش إكسسواريز مزيودين فوق المانيكين، بس كان فيترين زار يرفلتو دار الأفاريت، ما تستاش تتكلم فوق حاجة و تنسى الأخرى. Dil l-exhibition ma kienitx tkun possibli ki kun nis ramaw l-affarijiet u ma zammewomx. Il-sfortuna li d-diar il-lum għet jitxkienu u kol xat għandu dil-mentali ta' li jarmi. Pero, għabel jarmi wiħet importanti li jara naqra ġvalur għandu forsi għalih ma tfisser xejn imma għal-kultura ta' għana jek narmu kollu speċċament id-drappijiet netilfu għafna min l-identi ta' ta' għana. Forsi l-qoddim għati kunawn iktar lok fewi ħet jista jessi bixxi, ħaj kunawn iktar knowledge, din ija xaħħġa problema ma d-dinja kolla, iġifiri id-drab dan l-aħħar sir nanafu l-importanza tijaw għabel kien għam ajner art għax xaħġa li tintuza, konna dem natu importanza l-pittura, l-lamara. Illum sir nanafu l-potenzial li għandu kem nista un-niskopru għaffarijiet Allora, nisu ġarixi li għabel wijħet jarmi jow jaqas għas bitxa drab janalizza jina sanitlif min da l-logġet min jistajtini parir xandi u min flok tarmi għaw min jistajju hodum għaw l-kollezzjonit nazjonali għaw nis fil-privat li għandum fin iġemmaw da l-affarijiet u nima li tilfu xil-kultura taħna għax jekni tilfu da l-affarijiet il-futur għetfal taħna ma jikollum x fuq xix jistudja u xadda fil-passat min din l-gzira taħna. Once we were setting it up at the palace, it took us a while and we were working basically around the clock to finish the job in time and to prepare the exhibition that obviously Fondazione Patrimonio is known for. Perfection, basically, and so uh, we were there almost day and night, you know, fixing things, making sure that everything is to the not centimeter to the millimeter. There would be Mr. De Giorgio instructing us oh, that should be, you know, a little bit going that way, and I'm dangling there with you know nylon and uh, yes, a little bit more that type of thing. So it was fun at the same time, and um, I, I have to say, I got a lot of uh, important experience and. Even you know the the philosophy behind it, like you know when you need to do something really well, you know you have you need time for it. At the time, Fondazione Patrimonio Malti was chaired by Mr. Maurice De Giorgio, and uh, I will always be grateful for having met him and for him having given me the opportunity to work on this exhibition. He trusted the people who worked at Patrimonio Malti, 
and empowered them to do their job and he provided training for us and, and he allowed us to make decisions. And all of this, of course, with his coordination, with his backup and, and the backup of everyone, um, the exhibition was an outstanding success. It came from bottom drawers, it came from bits and pieces and people didn't know what to do with these things, but altogether they were completely stunning and we felt so proud to be Maltese. I think we need to get a good focus on who we are by what we wore.